a rainy day in Taipei, what better to do than walk around eating delicious street food? So from the famous scallion pancake to pepper bun to beef noodles, we're gonna try some of the most famous dishes in Taiwan. Let's do it. Today, I want to take you to eat some delicious beef noodles. But before we do that, I want to show you a few of the street snacks that you can get in Taiwan, starting with this place right outside my hotel. Now, I see this place every time I leave my hotel, and it's always intrigued me because she's making all of the dough herself. Look at this. The dough for the donuts proving. You have a selection of snacks here. You have these sesame balls, you have the donuts, and then these, I'm gonna call them fried Chinese donuts. These are more of the donuts that I'm accustomed to. And also I think she does scallion pancakes as well. Super cheap, homemade, very friendly, is letting me film. So I thought before we head into the center, why don't we try something from here? Uh, so she's frying the donuts. What should we have? I'm quite tempted by one of these sesame balls. They look quite interesting. Coated with sesame on the outside. And then maybe you get a scallion pancake, because that's something I've been wanting to try in Taiwan. Can I have one of these and half of the scallion pancake? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and one of them, please. Yeah. Oh. Just found a place just around the corner to try it. I think I'm going to start with this scallion pancake. And you can see it's not just scallion in there, you also have, or scallion spring onion, I'm speaking like an American now. You have egg, fried egg in there as well, or like an omelette in there as well. So you've got the pancake, obviously, the scallion or spring onion and the egg. She cooks it on the hot plate. She, unfortunately, we didn't see her cooking it, which is a bit of a shame. I like to watch those things, but if she has them prepared and gives them, I'm not gonna say, oh, can you make me one, please? Anyway, let's try it. Mm. You can see how thin and flaky that pancake is. Very nice, not too dense, not too heavy. Nice taste of the scallion coming through, and then the egg, nice eggy richness to it as well. Not too greasy, nicely cooked. One of the more common street stacks in Taiwan. Mm. Actually, I think I was eating it wrong. It was folded over, so it's not actually as thick as that. It's super thin. You can see just one layer, just a few millimeters thick. Mm. I like that. For me, that would be a really good breakfast. Well, it is. Let's try this sesame ball. I don't know what's inside it. Let's find out. Mmm. Oh man, that was a surprise. On the outside, it's crisp, it's crunchy where it's been fried and those sesame seeds pop in your mouth with sesame flavor. But on the inside, it's like a mochi. It's like a sticky rice. Just look at that. As I pull it apart, you can just see how sticky and glutinous it is. And inside that, I think I taste it. Yes, inside that, you have red bean... <laughs> That's an interesting sight. You have red bean paste. That, that is a great snack. It's sweet, but not too sweet. The mochi, the consistency of the... I'm calling it mochi because that's what it reminds me of, but the consistency of the mochi against the crunch of the outside is really nice. There's a little bit of oil on it. Obviously, it's deep fried in the hot oil, but... It's not, it's not oily, it's not, it's not very greasy, I would say. I'm holding it in this just because I don't want to get, get it on the camera now. But yeah, two great snacks. I love, I love that she makes the dough herself for the donuts and for the pancake. You can definitely taste the difference in that. But these fried sesame balls, I think they're the winner for me. Right guys, that was pretty good. And less than $70, I didn't count exactly how much change she gave me back, but good value. I'm gonna walk into town towards the beef noodles and we'll have some more snacks in that area. And let me tell you, I cannot wait for the beef noodles because it's pretty cold today. You can see I've got the jumper and I've got jeans on. It's not often that happens. So a nice warming bowl of beef noodles is what I'm looking forward to. But first, more snacks. Stop number two and it's this place, Fuzhou Ancestral Pepper Cake. And yes, we did film Pepper Cake in Rauhe Night Market. I tried this one the other day and I think, I think, this one might be even better than the one we had there. Not to say that one was bad, 
but I think this one might be better. So I wanted to show you it whilst it's in the vicinity of the beef noodles. So if you didn't see the other video, let me show you how they make it. So they have the dough, which they start by flattening out into like a little patty, and then they stuff it with this spice pork. It looks super tasty. And then once the bun or the dough is stuffed, it's then planted into a huge pile of spring onions or scallions, folded up around, made into that little bun shape. Look how perfect they look. And then a few sesame seeds on top, or they get placed into the charcoal oven. Just look at that. And then in there, they'll cook until they're ready, crisp and golden, where they look like this coming out. This place is super busy, super famous. There were big queues, but thankfully, everyone's disappeared. So I can make the video. Can I, have, can I order one, please? Love seeing people make the food before I eat it. You guys know that, and I love to show you. Pushes them up against that clay, clay brick oven. And it's pretty hot, this guy. You can see, actually, his hands are, it, well, his arms are red from where he's being burned. That is commitment to the job. <laughs> All right, here it is. You can see, crisp and golden. This thing is doing my head in, but it's the only place to sit. There's a speaker here saying the same thing. I think it's from this restaurant. It keeps going on and on and on. So apologies for that, but I need to sit and try this. So as I say, here it is, crisp and golden from the oven, the same horseshoe shape. I'm gonna say it's horseshoe shape. On the bottom, beautifully crisp and golden where you can see it's stuck to the side of the oven. And then this side is a bit more bready and a bit more doughy. It's super hot. I need to be careful I don't burn myself. All right, let's go for it. You can see the steam coming out of it as I blew it. I made a little hole in it and start blowing. Still, the steam comes out, but I'm too hungry not to try it. Mm. Can you see inside? Again, I said on, on the last video, it's like a little patty in there. It's like a little pork burger in there with the bun or the dough wrapped around it like a like a filled burger. This one, the reason why I think I love it is the spicing. I prefer the spicing in this one. The pepper, you can taste the pepper straight away and it gets you a little bit at the back of the throat. I mean, if it's called a pepper cake, you want it to be tingly and spicy with pepper, but then you get the onion flavor from that huge pile of spring onion or scallions that she put into that, even more than you do with the scallion pancake that we had earlier. But the dough, the bread on this, so crispy, so golden. The meat inside is so juicy, so flavorful. And you can see because it's so juicy, the juices have seeped into the bread, making this like gooey consistency that I absolutely love. I actually think these guys used to be at the night market as well, but they moved to this location. I'll of course leave a pin. You have to try both of them. If you're at the night market, of course you have to try that one. It was super tasty. But if you're asking me which I prefer, I think I'm choosing this one just for that spicy hit from the pepper and the crunchy, crunchy bread on the bottom. Absolutely love it. And just 60 Taiwanese dollars. Right, guys, I have come to Mr. Lau's beef noodles. And beef noodle is a dish that is eaten all over Taiwan. It's one of the most well-eaten dishes in the whole country. And you can find them absolutely everywhere, all over Taipei. Some of them are incredibly famous with huge queues, but I've come to this one. Mr. Lau is a small stall serving some top quality, well, I hope, top quality beef noodles. Let's check them out. I've ordered noodle soup with, well, you get two choices. You get the thicker noodles or you get the thinner noodles, although I would call them more medium. Just come around and have a closer look. He's got his broth cooking away in here, two sides. Ah, this is a clear one and this is a dark one. Uh, Same or different? I think one is more of a clear broth. Ah, okay, this has got the offal. Ah, okay. So it's got things like stomach and offal, and this, this is the beef. And look, just look how soft and amazing that beef is. And then you've got more stock here. Bowl of scallions or spring onions, but all just from a little stool cooking in these pots. But you guys think they're busy or they're popular? Look at this. <laughs> Ridiculous. So you've got a little shop here. You've got inside. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, just a small little shop, but you can see it's busy already. It's only just opened. And then you've got some seats outside too. I think we'll sit outside. Also got dumplings steaming away or boiling away here. I'm trying not to get in their way, but just look and see all of that meat. So it's cooked in the big chunks and you just know when it's cooked like that for a long time, you can see how long this is cooked. All that fatty gelatinous meat there as well. 
you know it's going to keep its moisture and it's going to be really, really tender, as opposed to if you just cook it in the smaller chunks. Menu is totally in Mandarin, but to be honest, you've basically just got different sizes. And uh, you've got a small bowl, which is this size, and I've ordered the big bowl because, well, if you're going to do it, you may as well do it. Noodles are ready. We've got those medium, I would say, egg noodles below. You can see that they're handmade just from the way they curl up and how they're all a little bit different. He gave me, of course, that beef. And that beef just looks so tender. You can see, I think you can see, I hope you can see how gelatinous it is. And there's a little bit of like fat and collagen in there as well. But again, little pieces of fat, which is going to add to the flavor. And he asked me if I wanted some of that offal. So of course I want some of that offal. How good does that look? So soft, looks like it's just the stomach actually. On a cold day like today, what I'm excited for is that hot broth. Dark, little bit of fat sitting on top of it. I have a feeling it's going to taste good. There are condiments on the side, and I'll show you them in a second. But first off, I just want to try this broth as it is, as you should always do before adding any condiments in. So let's try it. Oh, yeah. Rich, beefy flavor. Quite light, actually. Lighter than I expected. But there is a depth of flavor in there. It doesn't have, like we had in the pork soup, it doesn't have those medicinal spices. You don't get the star anise, the cinnamon, those five spices but you just get the clarity and the purity of that beef. So three condiments. We have what he is calling spicy butter, and I really don't know what this is, but it looks interesting. And maybe it's the fat with chili oil, which is rendered out from the beef. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest, but we're definitely going to be adding some. We also have maybe this roasted chili paste. That definitely will have a kick to it. And then, as I've seen in other places, you have these fermented greens, which is going to add a sourness and cut through some of that richness. So we're going to add a little bit of everything into the bowl. Texture, it is just like a hard butter or fat, I would say. Let's pile on these greens. Got to get the veg in, right? Let's do this. Got the wooden chopsticks. There was a choice of plastic ones, but you know by now, I'm useless at them. Wooden ones all of the way. Let's get this stirred in and get this fat melted into that broth. And you can see actually how the color has changed. It's gone a deep red, fiery red, let's say. And you can see there's more fat sitting on top of there now as that beef fat has melted into it. That takes it onto another level. How good do those noodles look? Just have a look at that, how thick they are. And Italian heritage reminds me of pasta, of course, but you cannot beat a good homemade noodle. And like good Italian pasta, he's cooked them perfectly. Slightly al dente, which leaves a tube in the mouth, not soft and mushy. Exactly how I like my noodles. Definitely knows what he's doing. They must be cooked just for seconds. Mm, you can see the orange chili oil coating those noodles. And it gives, well, I like spicy, so for me it's good. But because it's the condiments that are spicy and not the base soup, you can kind of tailor it to exactly how you like it. Let's try a little bit of that beef. You can see it's been cut up into those smaller chunks, makes it easier to eat. It melts in your mouth, it's so easy. You could probably just pull it apart with the chopsticks. Oh, this piece, this piece has a nice big piece of fat running through it. Look at that. So I'm gonna take that piece with some of those noodles, a little bit of that broth on the spoon, and let's try it all. You know, everything individually is very good, and I think that always makes a good dish. But if you can taste each component individually and still say, mmm, this is delicious, then obviously you're onto a good dish. But when you get everything together, get a little bit of that beef, get a little bit of those pickled mustard greens and some of that broth, and you put it all in your mouth, that's where the magic happens. The richness from the broth delicate beefiness, then the power of the beef flavor from the beef meat itself, sourness cutting through from that fermented cabbage or that, those fermented greens, the spice from the chili, and then the soft chewiness from those noodles. Very, very good. And I did notice when he put the broth in, he used two. He used a spoon of the broth that the beef was cooking in itself, and then he had a separate one as well, which must be more powerful. Maybe that's a mother broth that cooks and cooks and cooks all day long. Yeah. 
pretty happy with that. How much do I owe? How much? Uh, 120. Thank you. How oh, sure? You. Very good. Thank you. $120. Taiwanese dollars. That would be expensive, wouldn't it? Pretty good value. The mixed meat, large bowl of noodles. Ooh, that was great. Okay, after the warming beef noodle, I definitely need something sweet. And I want to show you two things. Actually, I wanted to show you three things. But unfortunately, the stool I wanted to show you, which is meant to be here, is not here. But that's okay. This one was a savory one, a savory snack that I wanted to show. I'll leave a link to it. It's a blood cake covered in powdered peanuts, which is super tasty. But she doesn't open until later. However, just across from her, is this guy who's serving traditional Chinese pancakes, and we're definitely going to get one of those. He's got his little stool where he cooks them right at the entrance to Hua Yin Street Shopping District. Very pretty, as these two guys have an argument over some packages. <laughs> but we're here for the pancakes, not the argument. It's got a variety of flavors. Looks like custard. Aye, custard, peanut. Black sesame. Ah, and black sesame and red bean as well. Yeah, red bean. Ah, okay. So you can choose a variety of flavors. Peanut or custard, that's the choice. But first, I think we might get to watch him make one. It'll give me some time to decide. Batter into the bowl. He's got his hot plate hot, so the batter poured into that hot plate. see as soon as it starts to cook it starts to bubble and now sugar and it's brown, brown sugar. peanut ah just brown sugar no yeah. peanut no peanut ah it looked like brown peanuts brown sugar it goes on and it's left to cook look at that brown sugar has caramelized the pancake is cooked underneath oh, that smelled good and this is just the normal one the normal pancake oh, look at that bubbled up ah this is the custard one Custard gets smothered on it. And it's going to be folded up and cut up. Ready to be served. It's going to have to be custard. I actually recommended that one over. I couldn't decide between peanut and custard, but I think custard it will be. Can I have one custard then? Is that okay? Thank you. Right, I've got it absolutely steaming hot, straight off the hot plate. Gives me a chance to quickly walk and get one more snack that I want to show you. Another little dessert, very, very famous here in Taiwan. Oh, and just because you guys love to know, 35 Taiwanese dollars. Final stop, we still haven't eaten the pancake, of course, but I just wanted to pick up one more snack before we eat the desserts. And you cannot come to Taiwan without trying the famous pineapple cake. So I've come to this place just near Ningjie Night Market and, well, it smells pretty good, so let's order. You can get the smell of them baking out back. You can see, actually, out the back here, he's making them. You have a choice of original green tea, chocolate, and cranberry. So we might try a couple. You can buy them individually. I guess maybe some people weren't sure if you can't, but one piece is okay. You can also buy the presentation boxes, bigger presentation boxes, but I think we might just try one of each flavor. One piece is $28. Can I, uh, can I have one original and one cranberry, please? Just one original and one cranberry. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually came here yesterday to eat them because I wanted to try the famous pineapple cake and he remembers me. So we're having one of each, same order as yesterday. One original, one cranberry. Thank you. Thank you so much. Where better place to come and finish this video off and eat my desserts, my sweet treats, than in the park? <laughs> anyway. I think I'm gonna start with the Chinese pancake. Absolutely huge for $35, a huge slice. It's like a slice of pizza, isn't it? But yeah, huge slice, it's warm still, so I think we'll start with this one. You can just see how runny and gooey, <laughs> I was gonna say soft, but how runny and gooey it is in the middle where that custard has just set ever so slightly inside of that, well, soft pancake. Loved watching him make it. L looks super tasty, crispy on the outside. You can just feel it. And then as I say, yeah, soft and gooey on the inside. So yeah, let's eat it. Mm -hmm. 
I thought it was going to be sweet, but actually it's not, I'm not gonna say it's not sweet at all, but it's definitely not sweet. Sweet is definitely not the first flavor that you get. You get the creaminess of the custard. And actually I think it's the custard that's providing the sweetness. I thought he was gonna have a lot of sugar in the batter, but not at all, very light, very fluffy. You can tell just by the air pockets, as we saw it cooking, the number of air pockets in there, almost like a, an English crumpet or breakfast muffin. It's so thick, I love the thickness of it. Yes, the outside is crispy where it's toasted on that hot plate, but the inside, the inside is where it's at. It's so, so soft, so gooey with that custard. I'm sure the other flavors are good. I mean, the brown sugar looked super tasty, but custard for me might be the perfect match for this pancake. Now, I'm not gonna give you any prizes, guys, but can you tell which one is the cranberry and which one is the original pineapple one? What do you reckon? I think we're gonna try with the, the mystery red one, which I'm gonna guess is the cranberry. So, look at the color. Deep red, very hard on the outside, actually. Almost like a biscuit on the outside. Let's try it. It is absolutely delicious. And you can see how crumbly it is on the inside. And then you have that like jam consistency with the cranberries. Sweet, yes, but so buttery. The biscuit, it's not biscuit, I don't want to call it biscuit, but the, it's a cross between a biscuit and a cake, isn't it? Because it's not actually a cake, it's not the consistency of a cake, but it's crumbly because it's so buttery, it just melts in your mouth. Mm. Sweet, rich fragrance from the cranberries. It's a bit like a shortbread on the outside, but not as hard as that. Again, I'm trying to think of what I can compare it to. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter when it tastes so good, just eat it. That one was good. Again, you can see how buttery and short. It's almost, again, like a pastry, I would say. But anyway, I need to stop trying to compare something I can't find the words for. It doesn't make very good content, does it? Let's eat it. Mm. Jammy consistency on the inside again with that pineapple jam. You know what they remind me of a little bit? If you're English, you might know a fig, fig biscuit, is that the name? Where it has like this, this soft fig compote inside and then the uh, like baked, well, baked biscuit outside. It's a little bit like that. It also gives me a little bit of a memory of a mince pie. And these are still hot from the oven. He actually took them out of the oven. But that buttery biscuit and that sweet inside, fruity inside, obviously, because it's pineapple. Oh man, it is so, so good. But they are rich. I've ordered two. I mean, I've eaten a lot today, but I definitely couldn't eat that many of these. They are super, super rich but super, super delicious. Right guys, that'll be that. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.